I've been conducting the hype train for far too long, but it's finally reached the station. Say goodbye to pixelated streams as AV1 is here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the future of streaming. Higher quality video, lower bit rates, higher resolution and frame rates. My first mentions of AV1 on this channel happened during my live news show that we host, but back in 2019. And while it's been a long road, this has been a very quick rollout, all things considered. To the point, you can very soon stream AV1 to YouTube live. And it's mostly as amazing as it seems, with 4K60 looking pretty solid at just 6 megabits per second. Intel is sponsoring this video and got me early access with an early build of OBS 29.1 to test this for the past week or so. And it's honestly more impressive than even I had originally expected. I don't want my hype and excitement to get away from clarifying that this is a beta feature for OBS. Rollout time is not exactly specified. And the OBS 29.1 dev build that I'm testing here does not have an exact release date yet. But this is coming very soon and you should be ready. Two crucial pieces were needed to bring us to where we are today. First is of course, AV1. It's an open source and royalty free video codec backed by a consortium of basically every major tech or streaming adjacent company that has any, you know, balls in the game for higher quality video designed to make high quality streaming video possible through lower bandwidth usage and without the the, the, the massive licensing costs of H.265 and H.266 and all of those kinds of codecs. The codec has been impressive in its bitrate efficiency at high resolutions for years now, but it's taken a lot of time and tireless development to bring its performance, that's the speed of encoding, to a place where it becomes, you know, realistic to actually use and to be used real time for live streaming. And the real time aspect especially hinged on us getting hardware that can both encode and decode that codec. Multiple generations of hardware can decode AV1 at this point, thankfully, including the PS4 Pro and lots of OLED TVs, little smart devices, and so on. And the latest generation graphics can encode it. Secondly, we needed a streaming protocol capable of handling AV1, as the existing ones weren't really able to, which we're just now getting in the form of RTMP+. RTMP Plus is the first revision to the RTMP standard in 10 years, allowing for a lot of cool stuff, including support for AV1, HEVC, and VP9 video. Most of those you don't gotta worry about. We're focusing on AV1 here. YouTube just rolled out RTMP Plus support, allowing you to stream AV1 for your live streams. Videos encoded in AV1 have been supported for a couple years now. Intel Arc graphics cards are a great entry point for AV1 video, with the A750 and A380 offering AV1 encoding at a lower price point than any other GPU vendor. Plus, Arc has top quality H.264 and HEVC encoding capabilities too. The A380 is perfect for your dedicated streaming rig, media server, or as a secondary encoding card if you want to add that into a bigger gaming PC. It's low cost, has low power draw, and a slim design. The A750 and A770 are better choices for gaming and streaming in the same setup or you don't want to pay $800 to do so. They're super attractive graphics cards visually, they keep getting massive driver updates like this recent one, and have options to get 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is great for photo and video editing as well. Recent quick sync generations have already been kicking everyone's butts in H.264 and HEVC video quality and performance, but their new AV1 video is the focus today where quality is also great and just mm, chef's kiss. I'm testing with a very early dev build of OBS 29.1, the upcoming update which will enable RTMP Plus and add AV1 streaming for YouTube. Options may look a tiny bit different as the update gets finalized, but the setup will basically remain the same. Open settings and go to stream. Choose RTMP S YouTube, and then go to your output settings, change the encoder to Intel QuickSync AV1, and set your bitrate accordingly. In my testing thus far, we did some test streams with the community where we got some pretty cool reactions. I think you can get away with four to six megabits per second for 1440p 60 gaming content and 10 to 15 megabits per second for fast action 4K 60 gaming content. These are incredibly low numbers, all things considered, with six megabits per second often being considered nowhere near enough for 1080p alone under the pass regime and on other streaming sites. AV1 encoding with ARC is so good at low bit rates, we've got plenty of viewer testimonials saying wonderful things such as. Now that is a crisp stream. I do Blu-ray encoding for a living and would honestly approve this for a disc. The stream is so good you can watch the gameplay and the reflection of his glasses. I had barbecue wings for dinner and I'd watch this stream. I've been showing samples throughout the video and I've now done a few different streams sending AV1 to YouTube with the OBS beta and there's just a couple things I wanted to fill in with regards to details on what you can expect. 
Overall, as I mentioned, I found, based on your all's feedback and my testing, that it looks like 4 to 8 megabits per second is the sweet spot range for 1440p 60. This is sending Halo Infinite and Vampire Survivors over to YouTube, and once it processes through YouTube's transcoding, you're looking at diminishing returns once you get past that 8 megabits per second part. It doesn't mean it's not worth using that if you have the bandwidth for it, because as you hit 15 megabits per second upwards to 20, you can get improved sharpness depending on the game, and depending on how intense the game is to run, you might improve a little bit of blurriness. At 4K, 15-ish was the great sweet spot for me, uh, 20 to 25 if you really want to go insane with like vampire survivors on super high levels but for most games you're not necessarily going to need that. Something very important to consider here is that when you're streaming it to YouTube, you are sending AV1 to YouTube, but YouTube is not delivering AV1 for streams at the moment. It's delivering VP9, so you're still getting that transcoding, you're still getting some quality degradation there, and this is assuming you're streaming higher than 1080p, because honestly, just don't stream 1080p at this point. But the good news here is that VP9 does a great job with these live streams of trying to not have macro blocking or the pixelization artifacts. Instead, you get a very smooth looking image that you might end up with more blurriness as you, you know, have more intensity for your the bitrate that you're sending, but it still looks like a very clean scene, which as VMAF has shown and plenty other quality metrics, viewers in general prefer a reduced sharpness stream to a blocky stream. So that's my recommendation. I do think a scenario where you could send a source quality stream at a low bit rate of AV1 would produce the probably the cleanest possible results as my AV1 copies that I saved locally are of course cleaner than the YouTube transcoded copies as is always the case with a compressed stream format. But I do think VP9 on the YouTube end plus AV1 being sent there is the best of both worlds for the flow that you're going to get on YouTube, which I think is pretty sick. I'll have links to the streams where I was publicly testing the AV1 encoding to YouTube, where I didn't tell anyone what was going on, in the description down below, because I really want to highlight some of these sections where I was pushing the bitrate absurdly low, and yet the video quality was still watchable, and in some cases pretty impressive, keeping in mind the streams were at 1440p and 4K, not just 1080p. Like, I would push it down to 1 megabit per second, 2 megabits per second for 4K, and 1440p and it was still watchable this is just my, like it looks better than so many streams on another streaming platform at a much higher bit rate than h264 it, it, it's just mind-blowing there are secondary benefits to encoding such high quality at lower bit rates with av1 too such as having a performance boost or extra encoding headroom by being able to just record the same stream encoder for your vods instead of a second you know tier higher quality encoder running for your VODs and your clips that aren't stream quality. This opens up a lot more room for clips and other recording capabilities, multi-streaming, and so on. Streaming has been changed forever. Viewers don't have to see blocking anymore. Streamers can save on bandwidth, and those with slower internet connections can still stream in amazing quality. Data caps will feel less restrictive, and you can save money on hard drive space as well. Plus, we can all focus a little less on video quality optimization nerdiness and hopefully a lot more on actually making better streams and better performances in the first place. This is the moment that I've been waiting for and hyping up for years, and I could not be more excited to get to share this first look with you. I'll continue to have more and more coverage for the foreseeable future on AV1 topics, as the hype train will keep on rolling and I will have a video coming very soon on Discord's new AV1 streaming update too. There are links below to grab an Intel Arc graphics card for yourself, as well as our Discord server where you can chat, you know, join and chat about encoding stuff, get answers to any questions you may have about this video. Remember to be kind, rewind. That hat really did a number on me there.